Hello and welcome to part two in my in-depth tutorials for how I made the infected knee. This one covers the molding and casting process. The first step in getting my sculpt ready to mold into a beautiful silicon flat mold is adding a flashing around the edges. It took me forever to realize how useful this actually is. It controls how much cap plastic you have around the edges and in this case less is best. Too much cap plastic will make it harder to apply and it will give away where your edge is because it moves on the skin kind of weirdly and is super shiny reflective. It takes work to make it look like it's actually part of your skin, so we put this flashing fairly close to the edge of the sculpt to eliminate too much cat plastic. Having flashing also makes it easier to transport, store, hold, apply, as a thicker edge will hold it all taut rather than just the cat plastic going everywhere and folding over and sticking to itself. So what you need for this is a flat, thin rectangle of clay. I used monster clay for this so I could heat it up, pound it into a rectangle and then cut off all the sides until I had a fairly squared piece of clay to cut off these lines. I gently push them around the edge of the sculpt using tools to join them together and then rounding off the edges. So rounding off the edges means it's way easier to do molds as a 90 degree edge is going to stick more in the mold than one that's been rounded off to easily be removed. Once that was done, we sprayed a layer of crystal clear on top and this gives the mold a plastic coating which makes the silicon come off easier and there's less clay to clean out from the mold. Next I cut up some water-based clay walls, leaving at least a centimetre between the flashing edge and the wall. I used the end of a paintbrush to smooth out the bottoms of the walls so that the silicon had nowhere to escape out of. I sprayed these clay walls with crystal clear as well for the same reason as before. Next I mixed up pinky seal silicon for the mold. This is an Australian product by Barnes, so if you're not Australian there will definitely be similar silicons available for this. I don't remember exactly how much I mixed up, I kind of eyeballed it and then I could mix up more if I haven't fully covered the mold. We used a chip brush here to gently push the silicon into all the detail of the sculpt, keyword being gently, and at this point my camera did turn itself off. But all that you missed is we poured enough silicon so that you couldn't see the sculpt underneath anymore with around a centimeter of silicon on top of the highest point of the sculpt. After the silicon cured, which took around 30 minutes, we removed the water clay walls and gently peeled it off the sculpt. I ran the silicon mold under water to clean off any water-based clay left on it and then Mark cut off any ridges on the back of the mold and put a thin layer of Vaseline over the silicon. He let it sit for about a minute and then wiped off any excess of a paper towel and then we sprayed the mold with a layer of epoxy par film release. I decided to airbrush on my cap plastic instead of painting it on as airbrushing gives it a more even coating. It comes out of the mold easier because if you're using a brush it can be wiping off or disturbing the release layer but airbrushing it just coats on top. I diluted my super bodies about one part super bodies to eight parts alcohol. I sprayed it from top to bottom in one direction, evenly coating it, and then I rotated the mold 90 degrees. So rotating the mold means there's no areas that the cap plastic is missing, especially in deep parts like the flashing, which would cause it to have a weak spot which could tear when you demold it. It also makes for a more even coating. So as you can probably see here, when you airbrush cap plastic, there's minuscule plastic particles in the air, which also cover everything nearby with a plastic webbing. You obviously do not want that in your lung, so I'm wearing my respirator while doing this. I'm also doing it outside so the webs don't get on everything inside my house. We use a heat gun on a low heat with a low air setting to dry between layers. If it's a hot enough day, I won't need to use my heat gun at all, but if it's a colder day, I could just wait about 10 minutes between each layer, but I don't got time for that. So if you want it to go faster, just make sure that your hairdryer or heat gun is not too hot or too close to the cap plastic, because they can cause your cap plastic to bubble, which will show up in your finished piece. So the reason you put cap plastic over silicon prosthetics is, well there's a couple of reasons. So if you've got a coating of cap plastic on the front and the back of the silicon, the silicon is completely encapsulated in the cap plastic. Silicon is notorious for being hard to paint, hard to glue, like nothing really wants to stick to it. So if you've got this layer of cap plastic on the back of it, it means that you can use glues which aren't specifically for silicon. So silicon glues are something like Talisys or Snappy G and they're way more expensive. If you're sticking it to the cap plastic backing rather than pure silicon backing, you can use something like prosate adhesive which is a bit cheaper. And with the front of the prosthetic, it's pretty hard to paint silicon with alcohol activated paints. They tend to come off pretty easily and it's hard to build up layers with it. So if you've got the cap plastic layer over the front of the prosthetic, the alcohol activated paints have something to bite into, have something to stick to, and it's a much easier job painting the prosthetic. 
The other important reason that you use cat plastic is it gives you a really nice edge. You have a really thin silicon edge which then goes into a really thin cat plastic edge and this cat plastic edge can be dissolved with isopropyl alcohol leaving you with a really seamless smooth transition to your real skin which makes it really hard to tell where the prosthetic ends and where the skin begins. So to test the thickness of the cat plastic to see if it's ready for silicon, I got a sharp edge of a tool and picked up the corner of the cat plastic. If it breaks, it's too thin. If it holds together, you can get an idea of the thickness and then know that it's okay to move on to the next step. Once the cat plastic is thick enough and dried through, I mix up my silicon to pour into the mold. I'm using Plastel Gel 10 silicon, so I measure out however many grams, I usually guess and overshoot a little bit, so this might be like 15 grams of part A, and then I put in my deadener, this is what makes it softer. So I added 100% deadener, that means that whatever the total of part A plus part B is, so if I use 15 grams of A and 15 grams of B, I will use 30 grams of deadener. This makes quite a soft and flexible prosthetic, which is what I wanted on the knee area. So I put in say 30 grams of deadener and then I put in my 15 grams of B. Putting the deadener in between part A and part B means that part A and part B aren't mixing and starting to cure before the deadener gets put in. It, it prolongs the cure a little bit longer than if you were to go part A plus part B and then deadener. I then put in a couple of drops of flesh tone silicon pigment by Mold Life and one drop of white as I am kind of pale. And then I also added a little blue and a little red flocking powder. As these don't dissolve into the silicon, so they give the illusion of a more realistic broken up skin tone with veins and capillaries. Once my mix of silicon, deadener and pigments are thoroughly mixed together, I spatula it into the mold and then using a metal flexible filling knife, I squeegee off the excess. I usually do this twice in two different directions. You want to press it firm enough to get the silicon from that cutting edge, so it's just cat plastic, but not push so hard that you rip up the cat plastic off the mold. Lastly, I go around that cutting edge with cotton tips just to make sure that there's no tiny layers or traces of silicon on that edge. You want it to be 100% just cat plastic, silicon free, so that it dissolves completely onto the skin for lovely edges. If there's even a tiny bit of silicon on that edge, it won't dissolve. Once the silicon has cured about half an hour, I sprayed one last layer of cat plastic on the back. So this makes it a bit easier to store if I'm not applying it right away. It means that I can use a prosthetic adhesive like Prosape, as mentioned before. Once that cap plastic has dried, I powder the mold with baby powder and keeping my fluffy brush nice and powdered, I start to use it to lift up the edges of the appliance out of the mold. After slowly working this out, I also cut off the excess cap plastic outside of the flashing. Now we are ready for pre-painting. Thanks for watching, I'll upload the pre-painting videos soon. If you want to be updated when new videos are uploaded, you can subscribe to my channel here.